Hello everybody and welcome back to Coon Valley Campers. Today we're going to show you a project I've been waiting to show you for quite a while. This is quite possibly the world's worst Westphalia, or as we like to call it, the worst Westphalia. So the eagle-eyed amongst you or long-term followers of the channel may have actually spotted this van before. Uh, way back in 2020, when we started our first Camps and Coffee event right here at the workshop, there is a small clip of this 1969 Bay Window Westphalia sitting outside the workshop and I was talking to some of my friends about it or something like that. Anyway, since that point, this has been hiding away and for good reason. We've been extremely busy as a business, plus we've had other projects to do and all sorts of things. But the story goes, a good friend of mine, Anton, who is one of the main guys responsible for the Grill and Chill event down in Kent um, in the south of England, he's an importer of vehicles. He goes over to California and over to America and he finds buses and cars uh, to bring back over to the UK to sell and post lockdown or during lockdown uh, in 2020, he asked if I could keep this vehicle at the workshop, give it a quick assessment so he can go on and flip it. Anyway, and with lockdown restrictions and everything else, this van just sat outside the workshop for probably about six months. And every time I got to work and every time I left for work, I'd spot this sitting outside. And gradually, I fell in love with it, despite its appearance. And I fell in love with it. And then in the end, I asked Anton if I could buy it. Why on earth would I buy this? And basically, the more I looked at it, the more I knew it was savable. Yes, it's been sitting for probably longer than I've been alive. The paintwork is terrible, it's rusty all over, and the interior looks like this. But I had to have it, I had to have it. So it's been under a cover for a couple of years now, and about two or three months ago, myself and the team, we actually dragged it out from its resting place. It was sitting under a cover, we pumped up the tires, gave it a quick assessment, emptied out the bits and pieces from the inside and dragged it back into the workshop. And this is where it has been sat probably for two, three months now until I've had the balls to actually get on and start it. And one of the first things we had to do was empty it out under this bed. Well, this entire load area had some sort of makeshift bench here and it was just full of junk and rat poop and mice nests and all sorts of junk just sitting under there. It's nice and clean, well, it's empty of all of that stuff now. Um, but we went ahead and uh, emptied that out. And if you have been watching our social media, I've actually made a start of cleaning up the outside, removing the rust and revealing the OG paint. But I think before we get onto that, Let's take a tour of what is inside this disgusting but beautiful 1969 SO67 Westphalia bus. So believe it or not, the 1969 SO67 Westphalia is a four berth camper van. It came with the quite wide rock and roll bed at the back here, that's your two. Up in the top, we've got a bunk for I think the maximum weight you can put on there is 60, 70 kilos, something like that. And there's also a cab bunk that goes across the A and B pillars over the front seats and you can put a, well, they've got to be at least five foot or a maximum of five foot and they sleep across the front there. So it's actually a pretty comprehensive four berth camper. You might be able to tell we're missing a few key components, things like insulation and door cards and headlining and things like that. But the two major components that are missing is actually a cubby seat that sits here and they attach to these four mounting points that you can see are left in the floor. And then right here, there would have been what's called a kitchen, well, it's, it's like a kitchen unit. It had a very oldy type cool box fridge. And then in the top, there was a sink, I believe for 69, it was a ceramic sink or even like a plastic sink. Um, I'm gonna have a pretty hard time finding the original, but I know they do reproduce sync. So I'm trying my hardest to find some bits and pieces for the interior, namely that cubby seat and the kitchen unit. So if you're watching this and you know where I can find some further interior bits and pieces, then please let me know. 
with regards to the rest of the interior, I don't quite know what I'm gonna do with it yet. I don't know if I'm gonna try and remove the original veneer or replace this or get Terry, our cabinet maker, to maybe reproduce the entire Westphalia um, interior and then we can re-laminate it in original Westphalia style veneer. And I know you can get that from, I believe, NLA VW parts. Um, we've got some bits and pieces from them in the past and you can actually get original style door cards from them as well. So we might have to give them a ring and uh, you know, give them the credit card and get the rest of the bits that are needed. But in terms of what we've got and despite how bad the van looks, it's remarkably complete in reality. We've still got that, like I say, we've still got the bunk bed, which is quite a rare item. I can't find one on the internet anywhere. Don't think anyone even reproduces them. Might be something we look at in the future, maybe reproducing them, but we can't find that. The rock and roll bed does actually work. And I have, I oiled up all the hinges because it's one thing I've not actually done. I oiled up all the hinges today and we actually got that opening. It actually does lift up correctly. And that door does open with a bit of convincing. Maybe not this second, but that door does open. It's missing a top locker, which you can see. But again, all of those parts can be reproduced. I'd love to show you more of a walk round of the entire van, but where we're sat now, you can tell right next to me is a wall. It's kind of tucked away in the workshop, so it's not taking up any real space where we do our day-to-day -day camper, camper van conversions. But it's just in a place that I can easily access it and like do an hour here, hour there in the evenings. But what I really wanted to do was introduce this to the channel and let you know that we are going to be filming more of this stuff on the channel. But also keep an eye on our social media, YouTube shorts and things like that because we will be, uh, I'll be filming a lot of this myself, but we will be filming big videos like this when it comes to doing more important stuff. Moving into the cab then, you can see that for the most part it's complete. We've got the original seats, we've got the original door cards. They are in an absolute mess, but it gives us a really good basis to start from. Most of the dash is missing in terms of the clocks, but I've already sourced those, they're on their way. Steering components, already sourced those, they're on their way. And actually in the cab is the worst place for the rot. The, the cab floor itself is pretty holy, and I think that'll be the major component that we need to replace in terms of welding. But the actual, you know, it's got the switch gear, it's got the brake levers, it's got the throttle pedal, it's got the gear lever, all those sorts of bits and pieces are all there and stuff that can be restored. And the main aim for me is to put this back on the road with as little parts as possible. Obviously there's bits I have to source, but I would like to try and use as much of the original components as I can for this vehicle. And that include, includes maintaining its look, which is the OG paint the original paint. This was the white, off-white color, and I will insert down below the actual paint code that this would have been, but it's the bog standard um, white that a lot of these Westphalias came in. And despite it being hand-painted blue and being covered in layers of rust, we want to bring that as much as possible. So we go for that rat rod type of look, rat rod, rat look, whatever you may think. But yeah, what a rad little project. It's a nice little sideline project for us. It won't be done in the next six weeks. It won't be done you know, in the next two months, whatever. We are just working on this plugging away, but I thought I'd really like to show you what it's all about. But before I, uh, before I show you what we're really gonna get up to today, let's have a tour around the van. As soon as I saw this bus then, I knew that we could at least in part, revive some of the original paint. I've seen lots of threads on the Samba and other forums of people reviving classic van paint. And the original VW paint is actually really, really strong and it's, it doesn't give up to chemicals very easily. Once it's sort of baked on there, it doesn't, it doesn't disappear unless you sort of rub through it. And if, you, you know, if you've seen the state of this van when we actually pulled it out from its hiding place, this was completely brown and you could see the hand-painted blue. And again, on social media, you've seen how we've been removing that paint, doing a process of which I'm just about to show you. My main aim is to get as much of the vehicle as I can looking like this, warts and all. I love the look. I love how we're able or how we've been able to revive the paint so far. Areas like the, around the windscreen, as you can see here, has obviously had some previous work done, it, done on it. And I would suggest, I would you know, hypothesize that the screen's been out, it had some rust problems in the past. 
So they've tried to key it back and then they've blended whatever paint they had to try and repair around the screen. Our aim, once this screen's out, is to clean up the area, assess the damage, and then hopefully blend in some of this white whilst keeping some of the rust spots. Sounds completely pointless, but I'd really, really like to keep this type of effect all the way across the van whilst repairing the paint. And when it comes to welding in panels, like the lower panel down here, the bottom's just completely gone. That's just behind this bumper. When we weld in a new panel at the front, again, I'd like to blend in the paint and the patina. Uh, as best as possible. So the next thing I'm gonna do is to show you how we've gone about that process. Kind of a how-to, more of a in-depth description of how we go into it. And as you've probably noticed, the sliding door is off this van. That's for good reason. When it arrived to me, the actual bottom roller was cracked in two. I've since sourced a replacement. So we're gonna now head to next door where I've got the door set up with the different materials we've got and the different solutions we're gonna use to revive the OG paint on a 54 year old camper van. So one of the main things, I, well, one of the main reasons I wanted to revive this bus is because I wanted to restore the paint. As I said before, I've watched on forums for years how people are reviving the paint on these old cars. And this is the perfect candidate. The whole bus has come up beautifully already. You've seen the front panel and the door that we've done so far and perfect opportunity to film how we do it and show you how we do it. And this is another great example because obviously we can remove this door so you can see what we're doing. And this is probably one of the worst panels in terms of rust staining, the blue paint, and different layers of paint as well. At some point in its life, this bus was yellow and blue or yellow and white or then green and blue or yellow, green and blue, I don't know. But all of these paints are of different qualities. They were applied at different times and they're, they've got different properties in how they're coming off as well, as I've learned on some of the other panels. Once we've got the rust stain removed, which is, which is being removed with this, this is a, a product I've seen on American forums like the Samba for a long time, CLR, calcium lime and rust remover. And it can be used in the house, 80% plant-based and safe choice. Basically, it's, it's non-harmful to the environment, et cetera, et cetera and it doesn't really harm you if you get it on your skin, although I would recommend wearing gloves when doing any of this. So uh, yeah, it's used for bathrooms, coffee pots, toilet bowls, concrete, washing machines and dishwashers. This is the sort of stuff you'd pour in and it would remove the calcium and stuff like that as well. However, when it comes to these older vehicles, people have used it on panels with great effect, as we've already seen. And I'm just gonna use a Scotch Brite with this solution just to remove the rust staining first and then you'll see how this blue just sort of starts popping. Like it really brings back the color, but then you'll see how thin or thick the blue is in different places. You know, there's areas of drips or areas around like sort of here where the paint has, it's not even coat all the way over. And the blue is quite easy to strip. To, to remove the paint, we actually use just standard thinners. And again, you'll need gloves with this. And we, again, we use Scotch Brite and then the blue paint comes right off. That orange, uh, yellow paint, as we found, is a little harder to remove, but it does come off eventually, and the green just, just sort of dissolves straight away. So yeah, I'm really hoping this will come up just as well as the front panel, as the door. Again, it's all character for the bus. But I think before we do anything, we're gonna remove these original Westphalia, and I hope I say it right, Jalousie or Yelusi, Yelusi, I don't know. There's the, the vented windows, the aluminium vented windows that come in these buses. They're actually only screwed in from the back. This one's, these ones actually do work. The dial is missing off the back of it, but with a set of grips, I can actually turn it and you can see how they're opening there. So that'll be for another video, another day. We shall disassemble these. I've done it before. It's a job I've done before is actually restore these windows. And it's an absolute pain to restore these windows, but well worth doing it because you can polish up the aluminium. You can replace all the rubber seals. You just got to be careful because that's very thin glass. So yeah, and I think what we'll do next then is remove that window, remove the door handle. So we've got no interruptions. We can get a real idea of the conditions of the window frame and then smash on with the paint removal. So I've just found, and I'm not gonna put it on camera, there you go, I'll just cover some of the numbers, just in case you wanna replicate the key in the future. There's actually a number on this barrel, and I believe that is the code for the key. This van came with no keys. 
So if I can get a key that would fit all the door locks, then maybe a different one to do the ignition barrel, or we could re-key the ignition barrel, the replacement one that I've got, then hopefully we could have one set of keys for the whole van. So with the window removed, you can see that it's not actually done very well. However, if we're lucky, the rust hasn't gone all the way through. Now you saw even on my personal van, Bully, in another video, the rust had actually gone all the way through. And I think actually one of the windows on this particular vehicle also, the, the rust has gone all the way through, which has created some further problems. But looks like we've got away with that. It's just a bit of flaking paint. So I don't know the history of this vehicle. That's the other thing. I know it was, I know it was imported by a company by Virginia or in Virginia. But from the evidence we've seen, we found a mug in the van from Georgia Tech University, the yellow jacket. So it's a nice cool plastic picture. Um, and we've also found a sticker in the front window that's Georgia. It's a coffee roasters or something in Georgia. So we believe that this vehicle might have spent at least some time in Georgia. And that's kind of all we know about it really. There are some pictures online on this, of this bus and I'll be able to link those, I think, if I can find it, um, of this bus actually being pulled on a trailer with a couple of other buses headed to the UK. So that's kind of cool that I've got pictures of this vehicle in America, but apart from that, I don't really know much else about it. So we've just been trying to piece together the story as it goes. A bit of archaeology, if you will. First stage then is using CLR, and I've just got one of these little lin bin containers here. Just putting a little bit on my Scotch Brite. And I'm just hitting the paintwork straight away. You can already see that that rust, I'm not even pressing very hard, that rust staining is coming off really nice. And that horrid yellow paint is coming through. I'm not looking forward to removing that. And then I just use a rag. That's the thing I've forgotten. So let me go and get one. And then once you wipe it off with a rag, you'll see that original color coming through straight away. Look at that transformation, it's like brand new. And actually, a lot of the yellow's coming off with the scotch quite easily, which is really cool. And when you come to the heavier rust items, you can hear it. So this is an area with not a lot of rust. And then they get to the areas of more corrosion. The sound changes on the scotch bright. And then I'm kind of working that paint crustiness down. So when it comes to the next stage of this paint revival, it should be a little easier. Now I might go over that another couple of times because still we've got some still we've got some staining but in terms of the inner window frame as well you see that solution and the scotch bright is bringing it right up that was the rougher rust so hopefully all of this down here will actually end up being like that and the aim is once we've brought everything back to og paint and we've stripped the van down we're going to be clear coating the whole thing so any rust dents scratches patina is actually preserved and it gives it an added layer of protection. So obviously where the rust is, that's bare metal. We don't want it getting any worse. So we'll just coat the whole lot in clear coat. Hopefully make a nice job of it. Top bit done then, above the belt line, already super happy with that. Where that real crustiness was, that's come back as just being some surface rust basically. It's quite heavily pitted in some areas, but it is what it is, I'm, I'm super happy with it. And even already some of the yellows come out. So I'm gonna start hitting up this blue. 
and the aim is not to remove the paint but to remove the rust staining same as before but straight away you'll see how much of a difference it makes to the overall effect because it's kind of cleaning up the blue at the same time so it's cleaning up the blue preparing it so it's scratching the surface of that old blue hand painted surface which means when I come to use the thinners on it it'll actually the thinners will actually bite and react more than if I was to not scuff it up you know what I mean so taking a bit of time to get right into the edges big area of paint loss there but again once you've really gone over it they're normally a lot better than originally thought and when they're bordered by the white they don't actually seem that bad now this isn't a perfect process and I'm sure there's easier ways there's probably better chemicals however for what this bus is covered in and bearing in mind I want to preserve as much of the white paint as possible and I've used a few solutions I've found this is the best, me best method for this particular car however if you if you want to do this on your car you might find that this system works pretty pretty well right so that's my first pass on that area get the cloth there you go you can kind of see how much that blue's brightened up already started removing some of the blue as well and those previously really crusty areas now the staining's removed they're not actually as bad as you think just another I don't know three square meters to do was that meter and a half by meter and a half yeah it's not costing me a lot of money to do this job but I don't know probably get some sort of RSI by the end of it but yeah again super happy with how it comes out I can already tell the whites going to be quite nice under there and you'll notice that where this sort of crazing is by the time actually the rust is removed it's barely visible so let's keep going So I thought it was a bit of fun before we do the whole thing, rust removal with the CLR. Let's do maybe a quarter of paint so you can see, see the real comparison between the worst and a clean bit. So I'm going to get straight onto the yellow and white area and green. And you'll notice that the green will probably come off first. You can see it's now starting to react. The yellow is a tougher paint, again, like I mentioned before. So it'd be nice to see how much that comes off. It's a different type of Scotch Bright than one I'm used to, so. Let's see how it comes out. The other option I have, rather than using Scotch Bright, is actually like a, a very fine grade, triple zero, no, quadruple zero wire wool. So you might have a go at that if this new Scotch Bright isn't that effective. And it doesn't seem to be right now. I don't know what's wrong with that stuff. But already that's far whiter than it was. So you've got more of that to do. If I start hitting the blue, so straight away, it's starting to go. So what I tend to do is sort of coat the area in thinners get that chemical working in the paint and hopefully by the time I come back over it with the scotch bright it's started to soften the paint and I can lift it off But what we'll do, we'll see how we can get on with this, and we'll bring you back after.
So that is the first, let's call it the first sixth done. Um, and what a change. It's super satisfying to see what it was to then what it can become. And remember I was saying that we have to hit it gently. We can't just, you know, go at it with a machine or, or whatever because we want to preserve as much of this original paint as possible. And in doing so, if I remove that handle again, if it wants to, if you zoom in just here, you can actually see there's a down and up arrow with the German and English text for open and close. So open or often and the Vergeln for close. So again, I've never seen that on a bay window or any other bus, the original paint. So that's a really cool feature. And you see, like I said, right at the beginning, how the different types of paint have got different tolerances to the solutions we're using. And I'll just have to hit them harder. The blue being the most satisfying and easiest to remove, we'll hit that all in one go. But what I'm gonna to have to do is come back with the Scotch Bright and maybe like a pointing tool like this. You might have seen me on the time lapse using some scissors just to really concentrate on one area. Because if I concentrate on one area with a whole bit of Scotch, for example, I can do what I've done here and that's almost burned through the paint. So I've gone through to the primer here just because there was one big blob of blue. And what I should have done is used like a corner and maybe a pointing implement or an edged implement to actually just concentrate on that bit of paint. So when it comes to going back to the yellow, I'll do exactly that. In fact, that's coming off there quite nicely with whatever thinners is left on that pad. So if I hit that there, give it a quick wipe off, you can see that it's, it's coming off. So, probably just another four hours worth of cleaning on this door. So we won't film it all today. What we'll cut to next is my personal time lapse on my phone or GoPro um, of completing the door. And then by the end of this video, you should be able to see this door mounted on the van. And what I've got, bear with this one second. When the van came to me, the bottom roller was actually snapped. And yeah, the actual bottom roller was snapped. So I found this replacement. It's a left-hand drive sliding door roller bottom roller, but I've now got to remove that runner, that roller wheel there onto here. And then by the end of this video, we should see a fully working sliding door. And then in another video, we should be able to restore that opening vent window. Again, that is a really laborious task, having to clean all the frame, clean the glass and fit all the rubbers. But again, a very satisfying job. And that's kind of how I want to hit this build. Being tucked in the corner as it is, it's really nice that I can't blow it apart into a thousand pieces. Because once a project is blown it into a thousand pieces, as you know, it's hard to concentrate on one area. Whereas being in the corner where it is, I can just concentrate on one bit at a time. So I'm kind of happy that I only have the time to work on it an hour at a time, a couple of hours at a time. And I can only work on one side at a time because that'll prevent me from blowing it all apart. And it means I can work on one area at a time and this door being a prime example. So one panel at a time, one window at a time. Let's get this bay built and we'll take you along for the rest of the ride. Um, yeah, so in the next shots, you will see this door finished and we'll put it on, mount it up. And we might even hit the windscreen surround next as well, because that's one thing I want to do. You saw that the windscreen smashed. I want to get the windscreen out, clean it up, see what we need in terms of painting that area. And whilst that windscreen's out, I can hit the dash as well, maybe sort the wiring, the clocks and everything else. Another area I can concentrate on whilst the van is in that corner. See you then. So as you've seen by the time lapse then, we have now completely stripped the door of the rust 
and the paint. Now, I still can't believe there were three layers of paint on here, or at least three different colors. He had the blue on the bottom half, and then the top half, and you'll remember from that time lapse, the whole top half of the van at some stage in its life has been painted yellow, and we've still got traces of it on this door and everything else. So it's yellow with the green on top, but it's all come off, you know, with that combination of the CLR and then the thinners, both with different grades of Scotch Brite. It's come up brilliantly. I cannot believe what it once looked like to now. It's, it's just absolutely mind blowing. Yes, it's got the patina. Yes, it's got the dents to actually get it to this point and fit it on the van. We had to straighten out a couple of bits very crudely. I'm no body man. But yeah, as a thing, it's brilliant. Um, it needs adjustment. So if I come to open it, it does need a lot of adjustment. When I received the van, the door was off it, or it was at least strapped in place. It had been beaten and bashed here, and it was actually down to this uh, bottom roller that was broken, was why the door was off. I don't know how long the door had been off. I think I've got the other part here. So that break actually on that door roller section is pretty old by the looks of it. It's certainly not a fresh crack, so who knows how long this door has been off. Um, and as such, I've put a, a new or used bottom roller on it and it's quite, it doesn't fit great. It's something just fell inside, I don't know what it was. It doesn't fit great. So on another video, what we're gonna be doing is adjusting the door. But for now, I think what I'm gonna do after seeing how good this looks and then seeing how unfinished that bit looks, what we'll do, we'll break out the CLR and the thinners again just clean up all of this bit to match everything else around it and then see the final result for at least this third and then in another up and coming video or another time lapse that you might see we'll get this bit all stripped out window out have a look at the condition and clean it up so as you said before or as you saw before we we're using the clr the calcium lime and rust remover with a decent scotch sprite i mean for some of the door we we did before i had some cheaper scotch bright and it really didn't work so well so if you are doing this make sure to get some quality fine grade uh, scotch bright because even if I do that section there you can kind of see the difference between like, the before and after luckily it's a nice narrow strip but it's just remarkable really how bearing in mind this paint is nearly 55 years old and with a little bit, or a lot, of elbow grease, it actually does want to come back to life. And I, I think from what we've done so far, you can actually see what the finished result's gonna look like, but it's definitely gonna be worth putting in the time, I think. And what are your thoughts? I'd love to hear what you think about the van. Would you respray it? Leave it down in the comments below if you think what we're doing is worth it. Do you like the patina look? Do you think I'm wasting my time? Do you think I'm wasting the internet showing you what I'm doing? But I think, like say, we, you saw the before shots and you'll be able to see the after shots in just a second of this whole side or nearly the whole side being clean. And I think the difference between the two is absolutely, well, night and day. I can't believe how well it's come out, to be honest. So there we go. So already the old original white is starting to come back to life now. The, the rust color is removed. And then, yeah, all the rust residue, so to speak, has been removed. I'll fill up a, another little tub or a different tub with the thinners and get a town on it. So there we have it then, we have at least a third all in white and like I said before I am so stoked with the result. It really has given me the incentive now to just push on with getting it all complete and I've just sort of placed the, uh, 
the louvered window in there very, very quickly just to give an idea of the finished sense. Look forward to going through the restoration of that later with you. And in the meantime, I have been collecting parts. We have hubcaps on the way, mirrors, all sorts of trim, new antenna, new windscreen wiper blades, all sorts of stuff ready to go on it and make it feel more complete. But in the meantime, if you have any other bits and pieces that you think might be suitable for this build, please do get in touch. I'm looking for things like court light glass. I'm looking for a unit that goes just here which is the SO, what did I say it was? SO67 interior. So I'm looking for parts for that. Anything that you might have at home that you might think will be suitable for this vehicle. And I'm looking for ratty parts. Oh, in particular, uh, a rear bumper to kind of match that front one and a rear engine hatch as well in this sort of white with a ratty appearance. If you've got it, let me know. And uh, I'm sure we can have a good chit chat. Thanks for joining us on this video. If you wanna see the progress of this, please make sure to subscribe um, and also hit the notifications because we'll be having this project on the go. We'll have the Type 25 Bully, we'll have the 2K T5 as well, and we've got some uh, live videos for the Beetle project as well. We're gonna hit you up with as many projects as we can at the moment, as well as our regular content of how-tos and product features and things like that. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one.